Hello, hi everyone, and thank you for this invitation. Um, and of course, also thanks to the organizer for trying to struggle against these structural gender inequalities in our movements. Um, please let me know if I'm speaking too fast for the translation. I'm not so much used to that. So maybe in the chat, I don't know, but you can notice me. Um, well, concerning the experience in Naples, uh, I'm referring especially to the experiment of Massa Critica, critical mass, um, which was uh, our municipal experience. And its characteristic may be uh, the, the one that, uh, in a way, is different from many other cases, is that uh, Massa Critica did not really uh, and directly run for the elections. Then the main idea was rather to, to have a public debate in the city, which was supposed to be a um, quite broad debate and especially a long-term debate. So the idea was to really have a platform where we, you could exchange experiences and thoughts and political issues in um, with a lo long-term thinking and a heterogeneous ground. Uh, rather, so rather than running the for the elections directly, the idea was to give an agenda for the city, whatever it was created um, before the elections. So the idea was to give. Uh, an agenda for the city, whatever the future city government would be. So Massa Critica was not really linked to a specific candidate, but rather uh, aimed to transform institutions in that way. So uh, trying to uh, set the agenda in a participatory way with public city assemblies. There were assemblies in squares in different neighborhoods of Naples. So the idea was um, to overcome in this sense a uh, traditional limit of participatory democracy, which is that um, usually citizens are consulted on what the government thinks is on the agenda, uh, but are rarely enabled to set the agenda themselves. Um, in, of course, the movement of Massa Critica and the municipalist movement in general in Naples uh, joined different um, different movements that were uh, mainly related to the housing issues, um, also issues against touristification, but also the struggle uh, and the, um, the struggle for the reclaiming of urban commons in the city, also connecting connection to um, the, the vindications and the rights of immaterial workers, uh, such as workers in, in the arts and theater and researchers, but also, of course, students. And especially, uh, there was also a connection with the environmental matters. We had had a tradition of, I mean, a story of vindication of self-determination on the territory, especially with regards to the management of garbage. And um, in that sense, uh, when, when Massa Critica was born, it was there was also a really strong struggle um, in uh, Bagnoli, for example, a suburban area uh, in Naples for the um, for for the renew renewal of, of this area, which was heavily polluted by a, fa a factory that was there beforehand. Um, so in that sense, Massa Critica joined different movements. And again, in a way, uh, it did renounce, actually, I mean, I'm saying this also as a critical reflection after uh, something like six years from then. Um, in a way, it was able to uh, push uh, different topics in the city, but still uh, being able to be, in a way, autonomous with respect to the city government, so maintaining the possibility of critics and conflicts with regards to the city government. At the same time, of course, uh, with this choice of not running directly for election, it renounced to uh, have itself the power, of course, in the city. 
since you asked about the role of commons, I have to say that uh, commons were uh, pivotal, I would say, in the um, Massa Critica movement, uh, and especially in the way that, uh, you know, in, in commons developed, were developed in the Italian debate. Um, starting from the experience of Teatro Valle, uh, there were different examples of urban commons, which were born by uh, from from uh, against precariousness and uh, exploitation, but also as a way to vindicate, to claim uh, spaces. So really, physical spaces for activities that usually do not have spaces. So in a way, the the idea was to uh, fight against the privatization of public property and public spaces and at the same time to give back these spaces as resources for community, for mutual aid activities, and also, for example, for culture, as happened uh, some years before in the experience of Teatro Valle. Um, in Naples, the, I mean, we have, uh, in, we had in Naples and uh, all around Italy, a tradition of occupied urban spaces, which were uh, the uh, actually places where political and social activities, cultural activities could develop. But uh, the, um, the occupation, especially of Lasilo uh, in first place, uh, ex Asilo Filangeri, um, kind of uh, um, triggered a new wave of, of understanding these occupied spaces. Uh, La Silo was occupied by workers in uh, of the sector of arts and culture, and the original intention was to have a symbolic occupation to protest, uh, for cultural workers to protest against their working conditions. But very soon, um, the um, occupation was uh, translated into someone something else. So the idea was to really open the space to the city as a whole, not only in its use, so in the possibility of using the space, but also in the possibility of directly managing it. So the assemblies started gathering and deciding also uh, often and I mean, always with the method of consensus uh, in order to um, avoid minorities being squeezed by majorities, of course, so to, to enable a real dialogue between heter different and heterogeneous um, ideas and inputs. And then the, um, it started with this new uh, political and institutional experiment, uh, which is to say that the community itself uh, imagined actually a, a new legal tool for the management of commons so for the management basically of public spaces in order to avoid their privatization and starting giving value to their cultural and social potential. Um, the, this legal tool is the civic and collective use, uh, more precisely the urban civic and collective use, uh, which was uh, based on the recognition by the city of a declaration which was written by the community itself in open assemblies. So basically there was no entrustment of the space to some specific person or collective organization, but rather um, a declaration which was like a little constitution of the space, which was recognized by the city, which then did recognize the self-regulation of the community over the space. But the idea of this uh, old path was not to liberate just one single space, but rather um, to, to enable a new way of understanding the management of public space and public resources in general. So this experiment gave place, first of all, to a network of commons. We have by now eight uh, commons that have been recognized with the same system and it's a network of very different and heterogeneous spaces and activities and organizations but they share 
the same attitude towards open direct management and the and the share of course the same legal tool um, later on la silo was also able to promote together with the neapolitan network of commons an italian network of emerging and civic use commons emerging commons was to say that a commons can be a commons also when citizens uh, reclaim it when citizens perceive it as a commons and therefore mobilize to actually liberate it and manage it as a common so not only because of their its political it's i mean natural essence like for water or air or oxygen etc um, and on this idea we gathered together a network of course based on existing relationships uh, a national network of emerging and civic use commons um, that was able to promote shared proposals at local level so in other cities after the legal president of naples but of course uh, adapting and considering other contexts and situations and uh, also we are now mobilizing for a national proposal uh, maybe you know that in italy there is a debate over the um, uh, national law on commons and we are trying to uh, to um, open up this debate so that commoners, people that every day live commons, are involved as well. You know, usually uh, law are made by uh, par the parliament with some selected experts, and the idea is to rise abroad, open an expert debate with commoners themselves. So valuing the expertise that commoners themselves as have. Um, so now we are promoting together with many other national organizations a um, popular commission in order to discuss a possible text of, uh, of national law on commons um, that uh, would be then proposed to the parliament. Uh, so, and concerning also the city level, the debate and the movement on commons was also the base to rethink local participatory institutions. Uh, from the movement of Massa Critica, exactly, uh, we the, the um, I mean the movement persuaded the city government to establish two new institutions, which are consultative institutions. The first one is the Observatory on Commons of the City, and the second one is a Council of Audit on Public, on public Debt. Um, so the idea is that these, or these bodies are proper institutional, uh, are participatory institutional bodies and are consultative bodies. So they give advice to the city government with regarding to the relevant matters, subject matters of their competence. And the observatory is on commons is given, uh, of course, is facilitating and supporting the processes of self-regulation and recognition of commons and the way it can uh, continue renewing the legal mechanisms of management of public spaces. While the second one is aimed to raise a public debate over the city resources. Very often, especially in Italy, you know, one of the countries that have been hit the hardest by the city, by the crisis of 2008, um, social rights are cut because of the public debts, because of needs of public budget. So the idea of the audit council was to raise a public debate meaning that if the debt is public it has to be discussed publicly so it kind of revealed publicly the political choices that were behind austerity which is not a, a natural necessity somehow but was a precise political choice and at the same time to still avoid the, the budget uh, constraints turn out to go 
against democracy and social and fundamental rights. So this was, I think, basically uh, an overview of the situation. And um, oh, thanks. Mm -hmm.